Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today we are about to program a simple MQL4 indicator called the Rainbow Indicator. And after that, I will break down some differences between indicators in MQL4 and MQL5. Let's jump right into it. So this is how our indicator should look like. The middle two lines are the simple moving averages of the high and the low values and the other four lines are the moving averages plus or minus the ATR values. So first we want to go to the event editor. You can do this by clicking this button. After that we want to create a new indicator. So we select the indicator folder and we click new file here. Custom indicator and let's call it rainbow indicator. You need the own calculate function only. And here is our indicator. First, let's discuss the properties of this indicator. Here it stands that indicator chart window. This is a property used for distinguishing indicators that are either in a separated window or on the chart. This indicator will be on the chart. Now we need the amount of buffers needed for our indicator. And there were six lines, if you remember correctly. So we add the property indicator buffers six. This is how you should initialize the amount of buffers you are going to use. And there are six colors in our indicator. And for that, we are also going to use properties. You could see that the first one was red, the second one was orange, third one yellow, just like a rainbow in the nature. Well, now we need the input variables. There will be two input variables an ATR multiplier and the period. The ATR multiplier is going to decide with what value we are going to multiply the ATR before either adding or subtracting it from the moving averages. The period will decide what will be the period of our moving averages. Now for our indicator to work, we have to initialize six buffers. I'm just going to call them first buffer, second buffer, third buffer, and so on. I don't want to make it complex at all. Now we have came to the init function. Now we have to bind the buffers with the arrays initialized right here. We can do this with the set index buffer function. We are setting the zeroth buffer with the first buffer array. And we are doing it for each and every one of the buffers and arrays here. And after that, we want to set our buffers through begin. So when do we want our indicators to actually start plotting their values on the chart? We want them to do that after the first candle. And that we can do with the set index draw picking function. We can select here the buffer and select here where we want to start drawing. And that's basically all we want to do in the onInit function. In the code, you will see a, an indicator short name also. You can set the short name of an indicator with the indicator short name function. This is not necessary, but if you want your indicator to have a short name, you should do it in the onInit function. Now let's get to the onCalculate function. This is where we are doing the actual calculations. This is where we are doing basically everything important. And first, we want to return zero if the race total is less than period. If the race total is less than period, we are basically unable to calculate anything on the current chart. We want our arrays not to be series so we use the array set as series functions with false so that the arrays are actually not series arrays series arrays are working such as the first value is actually at the current bars and whenever we update the value for example we update a candlestick so a new hour begins if we are on the hourly chart then if the array is a series array this new value will be the first element of the array. The open, high, low, close, all of these arrays are series arrays. So the close zero would not mean the first close, but it would mean the last close. That is basically what a series array is. So we have to set these here arrays as non-series arrays. And now we want to do our calculation. This is how our for loop is going to look like. If you are writing basically any indicator, your for loop should probably look like this. So we are going from equals race total minus the previously calculated. The race total is the 
total amount of bars available for calculation as the previous previously calculated it is the amount of bars calculated until now and we are going to go to is less than raised total and i plus plus now we want to initialize or ATR value or low moving average value and or high moving average value. We can do this by calling the IATR function which returns the current ATR value for our symbol and our period. The current bar we are looking at is the raised total minus I always and we want to initialize the high moving average with the IMA function but we apply the price high right here and we want to initialize the low MA with the IMA function and we apply the price low right here. These functions, these IMA, IATR, IMA, CD, they always return an indicator value for a given bar. This bar right now is at rates total minus. So now, very easy, we just want to fill up our arrays or our buffers with the values that we want to display on the chart. The first buffer is going to be the high MA plus two times the ATR multiplier plus the ATR value, current ATR value. The second buffer is going to be the high MA plus the ATR multiplier times the current ATR value. The third buffer is just going to be the high MA. The fourth buffer is just going to be the low MA. The sixth, fifth buffer is just going to be the low MA minus the ATR multiplier times the ATR. And the sixth buffer is just going to be the low MA minus two times the ATR multiplier times the current ATR value. And that's just how easy it was to write this indicator. Now let's see if it compiles. It compiles, let's run it. Here are the input variables. Here are the colors, which you can choose what color you want. I want the input variables. I want the ATR multiplier to be one and a half. And I hit OK. And the indicator draws itself on the chart. Now let's see what are the differences in MQL5. When setting the properties of an indicator, in MQL5 you had to set the indicator plus, so the amount of lines or anything you would want to draw on the chart. In this case, we have six. And you also have to set the indicator type. Which draw method do you want to use? We want to draw lines right now, but this could be arrows, candles, color arrows, anything else. In this case, we will stick with line. The set index draw begin function is called plot index set integer in MQL5. So that is also a difference. Now the last and the most important difference out of them all is how you handle indicators in MQL5. Here you have indicator handles, which are initialized once in the uncalculate function. So they are static variables. They have the same inputs or almost the same inputs. You don't have to give which bar you want to use it because it's just simply a okay, uh, handle. So it doesn't have a value, it just returns a handle. You will use the copy buffer function to get the value, to get the actual value out of this handle. These two lines are almost identical with the ones that we are using in MQL4, but the only difference is now the high MA is an array because this copy buffer function needs an array for its input. So we just copy these values out of these handles and now we have the high MA, low MA, current ATR and we can reference them as an array. And that's about it for the difference in MQL5. Let's run the code. And as you can see, it works properly just like in MQL4. If you want to create your own grid or hedging strategy without having to write a single line of code or you want to have a trading tool that enhances your trading experience, then check out an Edger EA. I will have a link in the description below. And if you would like to see more videos about free user trader tools, EAs, or indicators, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Now that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Have a great day. My niggas is